Hey everybody, what's going on? Chris Mohan here, uh, doing another road reflection. No, oh, it's going to be a short one. Uh, you know, if you saw the runtime, you probably know it's going to be kind of a short one. Um, do another one of the car, you guys. Go back to the classic format a little bit. This is the true classic format. Uh, while I'm sitting in the car and chat, talk, 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 talking about some ideas with you guys. Um, I wanted to bring this up because it was on the you know, uh, chatting with a, a, a family member who was talking about uh, the economy, right? A, a, we, we were discussing, not in depth, um, the economy, uh, but uh, just just the passing comment that, that got my brains turning a little bit. Uh, they basically said, like, we're looking at a generation of kids who uh, are kind of screwed because you know, the economy is, is uh, going to take a long time to recover. And any time that there's any sort of crash or collapse, that's, that's usually what happens. The younger generation uh, or the newer generation of, of people entering the workforce are the ones that are going to be screwed. And, and that is 100% true. Um, look, my, my graduating class uh, came in. Uh, I graduated college in 2010. And uh, we came in with fucking nothing we had no I mean there were no jobs especially like as someone pursuing work in the creative field like I was I I was a graphic design major that's what I went to school for um and then I just you know continue wanted to continue pursuing comedy as a full-time thing I I was doing comedy all through college I started in high school and just continued doing it all through college and wanted to figure out how to do it professionally when I got out especially because uh, I mean, it took me, it took me over a year to find a real graphic design job. Um, you know, like just, just a real quick thing, like 08 happened, the, the, the bubble collapses, you know, we have GM that needed bailing out, the housing market needed bailing out, the banks got bailed out, but the people were fucked. There were a ton of people that were unemployed in 2008. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's, that's, that oh, that was part of the Obama administration. So fast forward to 2010, I'm getting out of college with no prospects of a job. Like I had an internship in college and, you know, uh, they just weren't hiring at that internship. Um, so, I, you know, so that that was a kind of a dud, um, a little bit of a Dudley Moore situation. Uh, but... I worked at a fucking shoe store for over a year. I tried to get my job back at Starbucks for a while, and then I worked two, two or three jobs. I decided I was going to try to do freelance. I decided I was trying to do... I mean, I was stressed out just trying to like make ends meet, and my ends meet was essentially making sure I was able to put gas in my car and take care of my student loan payments, and I was paying double into my student loan payments so that I would be able to get rid of them. Um, so the, like the first two years were incredibly stressful. Uh, I got a job offer, a really good job offer at a boutique design firm, but they were a little shady about it where I was basically getting paid a salary, but I was going to be 1099. So in reality, like I was losing, I was going to lose half of my fucking income for a 1099 but it was a full-time position and when I confronted them about it uh they got really indignant and uh and then just said I was fired and didn't pay me for the week that I was in uh I was there for and I never made a fuss about it because who gives a shit but it was also like that's where the economy was is that if there was a job it seemed like these companies and even sometimes it seemed like some of these boutique companies were going to be uh, kind of predatory uh, of the younger generation. They were going to come in and, and put us in some kind of a bullshit trap uh, of like, yeah, you're going to get paid, you know, 75 grand to do this job and it's awesome. But FYI, when it comes to tax season, uh, you're going to lose about half of that. So all that independence you thought you were going to get, you're not going to get. So you don't have a $75,000 job. You maybe have a, a $28,000 job. 
because you have to put half of that away for, for when we 1099 you instead of W2 you. Uh, you know, it leaves the market open for that sort of stuff. And I think we're going to see that sort of stuff again. A very simple, easy way. I think you could have really avoided all of this shit. And I, and I do want to talk about the education thing. But, you know, a real simple, easy way. And I know I've, I've talked up a storm <laughs> when it comes to this topic. Uh, but I do really think that it, it, we, it, now more than ever we need this, uh, uh, this plan put into place is universal basic income. Tulsi Gabbard pr- uh, proposed a universal basic income of $1,000 a month, uh, something that Andrew Yang was doing on March 12th. Bernie Sanders picked it up on March 16th or 17th and pushed a $2,000 a month plus Medicare for all kind of situation. And then only after did they bail out the banks twice uh, because they bailed out the banks knowing that this was going to hit st- the states and then after it did hit the states... Uh, and there was something like $4.75 trillion pumped into Wall Street and the banking industry, then you had senators like Kamala Harris and Cory Booker saying UBI, 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 knowing full well, knowing full fucking well that they were never going to pass it. Why? Because everybody else was talking about it. It had become a not just a flagship issue for someone like Andrew Yang, but... You know, also, it had become a mainstream talking point for a lot of people because of the of the uh, the virus. But we tend to forget about these sort of things. Uh, American politics has the memory of about thirty two seconds. So, UBI would have very easily fixed this, right? Most European countries are doing this. Canada's doing this. New Zealand did it. Um, Countries that wanted to push a neoliberal agenda did not. Japan didn't do one. Their numbers are pretty low because their cultures are probably different. But I think uh, economically, uh, you know, like poor, they're they're struggling just as much as we are, is what I've read. Um, you know, so. But the, but the Sophie's choice of economy versus public health should not even be debated. You should not have to make a choice between putting food on your table and public health. That's insanity. You, you should have done a Medicare for all. Uh, that should not have been a matter of debate. And now you do have someone like Joe Biden and Kamala Harris that are saying, no, we're not going to do Medicare for all. We're going to let the insurance industry... Uh, dictate what needs to be done, even in even in a pandemic, even when there's uh, so many people that have lost their jobs and their insurance because their insurance has been tied with their job and they can't afford independent insurance because that's not how it was built. There's all this pride in the ACA when 10 million people were left out. I'm I'm being one of those 10 million people, and then they were penalized for not having the insurance they can't afford, penalized for being poor. Simple way to fix all of that. Uh, and and make sure that the economy is bolstered and people are able to afford the food that they can and they can support their communities. It's Medicare for all, universal basic income, and then you bail out the small businesses so that they can keep their employees employed. There's another thing I kept hearing over and over again from my small business friends was it was either we keep their employee we we keep them employed with a little bit with the minute stimulus that they got, or we fire them so that they can get on unemployment and actually get money to, like, make rent and put food on their table. That, again, that bullshit Sophie's Choice should not be something that people should make. That's a bullshit Sophie's Choice. And if those are, those are the options that your politicians are, are fucking offering you, then get rid of them. Stop making excuses for them and fucking get rid of them. Right now, uh, the education system uh, in this country, another profit-driven education system, is struggling because they don't know how to adapt to the virtual world, right? Because there was so much uncertainty and bullshit about, oh, how long is this virus going to last? Who gives a shit? If this virus lasted six weeks, you should have taken care of Americans for six weeks. 
There should have been a plan put in place for six weeks. There should have been a plan put in place for actually 12 weeks so that people can get back up on their feet. But there wasn't because they didn't give a shit. And the education system is no different. There, sh- there, was, there was no reason that when this thing pushed its way into June and started pushing its way into July that the American education system, whether it be high school or on a collegiate level, should have figured out how to run its industry virtually. There's no reason. No reason why massive universities could not figure out how to run their shit virtually. All the teachers were planning for it. I've talked to a bunch of educators that they plan, they may, they they adjusted their lesson plans so that they were like, yeah, if, if this needed to be virtual, I knew how to package it in a way that the kids can learn virtually. Why wasn't the system doing it? I am a a fucking no name underdog comedian, right, with a small modicum of following, and I figured out how to pivot virtually. I figured out how to create content and perform uh, in front of an audience in a virtual theater. I fucking figured that out on my own. And I'm not rich. I don't fucking have money. I'm just a fucking work-a-day schlub. I'm a fucking poor dude. And you're telling me that the education industry, with its with all the money that they get, the universities, fucking Harvard, UNC Chapel Hill, Notre Dame, all of these schools that get millions and billions of dollars can't figure out how to adjust their curriculum virtually when they were given the gift of five fucking months to figure that out. And now, who's going to be the victim of that? Kids. It's always a, a, a testament to me to kind of see that sort of stuff, right? Of who is going to make the adjustment. And you had these big name stars that were making the adjustment of like not perf- not doing their uh, their kooky little show where they call Trump Orange or whatever for 38 minutes uh, in front of an, uh, a, a live audience and kind of having a panic attack about it or, or, or what have you. And, uh, you know, it, it, like, meanwhile, every fucking middle-of-the-road entertainer was able to figure it out. Support your support your educators. You don't need to support the system because the system has basically fucked itself. Support your educators, people on the ground. You know who's helped me more than the fucking government has? Average regular people that have decided to donate, make one-time donations to me. You know, family members that have helped me out along the way. Uh, people that make sustaining, uh, become sustaining members. That's who have helped me out the most. So support the underground people. These corporations have all of the resources in the world, but somehow can't figure out how to adapt to things. It's total bullshit. There's no reason why they couldn't have done that. You had five months to fucking figure it out. Five months to figure it out. So, and this thing ain't going anywhere, right? So the argument is of like, oh, well, maybe it'll be gone by the spring. Maybe maybe by January we'll have a vaccine. So what? Who cares? Do virtual for the entire 20, 2020 to 2021 year. Do it all virtual. Because parents are still going to have to get back up on their feet. People are still going to have to get accustomed to, like, going back to however things were. So... It's going to be, there's going to be an adjustment period that we're going to have to think about now, especially now. There's six months. There's no reason why going virtual in terms of education and entertainment should not be a long-term plan right now. That's just a reality we have to live in. And especially with the, the culture in America, this, this culture of hubris in America, uh, you know, then I don't, I don't see the numbers going down anytime soon and wave two is about to come through. So, you know, support your independent teachers. 
Support them. Support the people doing things virtually right now because they're the ones keeping you safe. They're, the, the teachers' union, they're the ones that came up with the safety plan of how to reopen schools permanently. They did the CDC's job for them. The CDC didn't fucking do shit because they did this wishy-washy, maybe, I don't know, tomorrow it could be fine. It's not. We're, we're, we're in it for a longer haul and I think we need to be realistic and prepare ourselves rather than doing the shit that we just did over the summer, which is not prepare ourselves and make up a bunch of excuses and then at the last minute try to cobble a plan together. That's, that ain't going to cut it for the next six months. We need large systemic change and, and planning. You, organizers and activists have been doing it the whole time. Comedians have been fucking doing it far longer than corporations have. So support them. Uh, all right. That's uh, that's all I got for you guys today. I just wanted to kind of get that off my chest because uh, of that little conversation I had. You know what to do. Hit the like. Hit the shares. Hit the subscribes. Uh, and uh, stay tuned. I'm going to be putting up a bunch more videos in the next couple weeks. Uh, and, you know, get your tickets for virtual shows. Go to Uh I love you guys. See you soon.